Hi everyone, it's Diane from Art of Craft. I'm going to be doing a little thing on texture paste, gels, mediums, modeling creams. There's a thousand ways you can use all these different products. You can color them, you can manipulate them, you can stamp in them, you can use them freehand with your palette knives, you can use them for glues, you can animate things into gels. There's just so many things you can do and it's fun. Everybody gets confused, but the confusion is really only in brand names because a lot of them will do the same thing. Some of them are better than others. Some of them will do different jobs than others. Here's a selection here. We've got our heavy gel mediums. Now, gel mediums are gen generally transparent so you can see through them. That means you can use um, mediums over them. Um, like alcohol inks, which gives you a translucent effect. All that means is that kind of like a glassy see-through effect. Um, some of your pastes, like the one from um, Tim from Ranger, it's a texture paste that's opaque. All that means is that you can't see through it. it, it it'll dry white unless you colour it. Or And paints, your acrylic paints, they're opaque. So when you apply them on top, they take over and you don't get that translucent effect. So all these different things and they're made by Prima now, they're made by um, the Artists Mediums and Gold and they're made by so many different places um, or so many different brand names um, that you all get confused. There's Beaver Decor and there's Modeling Creams but it, don't get confused. They all handle slightly differently but what they're doing is creating texture on things and you can see from this where we do a little class canvas where this is just all about texture and as usual it is in my dark colors because that's what I like the ones in classes weren't all dark like this there was some lovely ones um, in colors you might enjoy um, but it's all about creating texture I don't know whether you can see the texture on there but there's a lot of texture on there put on with crackle paste um, using embossing powders, using glass bead gels, which is a really fun one to work with. Your glass bead gels is transparent, um, but it has little tiny glass beads in it and it gives you a nice rough texture or it reflects your work as in this one here. Um, again, these things are going to be really hard to pick up on camera, but um, they're, they reflect the colour that's underneath and they give this really cool effect when you use glass bead gel. Of course you can create texture with things like paint as well, gesso, and as long as the product will dry, um, it's not too thick, uh, you can create all sorts of fun effects on your work. So that's all the different ones I can tell you about. Oh, this is another example too. This is using the metal effects one. Um, where you're creating a metal look on your um, work. But you can still use your stencils, use your brush, use your palette knives and go ahead and texture and have fun with it and then apply other products over the top. I've got a couple of fun techniques to show you today but I'll just show you some of the things you can do. Um, this is your texture paste, just palette knife onto your work, stamped into coloured. Um, get a good look at that. Some of these things don't transfer very nicely onto video. Um, this is using a metal effects straight onto a card and it's get, it kind of looks metally but kind of dull. It's all in how you handle the product. Again, texture on there. And modeling creams. Modeling creams are fun to play with. Then we get down to, I mean, I've got some examples here. It just goes on and on and on because I do all sorts of classes. This is using one of um, Tim's stencils. Again, metal effects in the background. But if you look really closely, I've come over the top with a gel paste. Um, I've used the gloss gel paste from Ranger and, and just put one of Tim's um, stencils over the top to give you this clear over metal effect. These are all just background things. His texture paste, the texture paste Ranger makes, idiot proof, I tell you. It just goes on beautifully and you can get beautiful, beautiful detail in it. 
um, this is where I've actually combined both. I've got the gel medium, which is clear in the background. So these light pieces you're seeing, they're actually the card below. And these bits I've started to colour up. And because his texture paste, um, it takes on colour, which is brilliant, because a lot of them will resist colour. Um, just fun effects, beautiful effects you can get. Vibrant colours, vibrant texture. Um, using crackle paste. Look at the fine detail on that, and that's what I mean about using his texture paste. It's really, really gets there and it doesn't smudge or make mistakes. This fun thing, we might do this a bit later. This is actually using the matte gel. I love the range of matte gel. If you spray it when it's wet, you can it, it'll, it'll just stay on there beautifully. It soaks in. Because you've got to remember that all these pastes are actually water-based to start off with. So if you're going to spray them with this water-based spray over the top of them, it's going to fix in there. It's going to combine with the gel and fix in there. Unlike if you were to put the gel on, what you'll do is cre create a resist. I've got an example here. Um, and it it'll dry, all you'll see is underneath, all you'll see is the card coming through as in. If you let them dry, this will happen. You'll see the card underneath, which is just this manila card. Um, and, it, and when you put colour and paint over the top, it'll, it'll sit there like a pattern. But when you spray the mat on, it sinks into the gel. And I've actually used Ranger Texture Tools to put some lines on there so I can make... Um, the gel run in and around but remember do it wet if you want it to stay there and make it look fun these are man you can just make beautiful canvases very quickly um, if you start playing with gels and sprays um, and spraying them like this it's just so much fun all these created for different reasons getting trying to get what we call our power uh, effect over here um, using your metal effects and this, this type of thing has just been created by putting the ferro metal, spreading it down the tag, sticking the two tags together, pulling them apart, and then I'll have two um, the same. And then you then you get to make detail on them. I've actually used Viva the Inca Gold paste on there. But I've been, while it's been wet, I've sprinkled some embossing powder in there. And as I've dried it, the embossing powder has soaked into the work. Uh, but that, of course, these aren't finished in any way, shape or form. Um, the next step would be to bring out the details in these. And you do that by shading the edges and um, creating whatever I'm going to create out of it. This fun te technique that I'm going to show you today is actually using um, the modeling creams, which are so much fun. Um, you get them in lots of colours, and you've probably got some in there. Well, this is not about the colour this time. Um, this time we're using it in a fun technique to create um, a picture using alcohol inks. The difference between the modelling creams here is that these create a non-porous surface, so you cannot, you've got to apply product on top of them. There's no way it will sink into them. The way that um, I'm going to use it is, I've, you can use any one, like I actually think I've used a pink one like this. And this is going to look a bit strange, but um, I've just used any one of my light ones. And I've created this using this Koi stencil from Crafters Workshop. And I've, I haven't done it. In particularly nicely you can spread this very nicely it's easy to use I recommend that you use one of these soft 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 um, palette knives with it as opposed to your metal ones because when you're coming over in my opinion and these are only my opinions when you're spreading this paste over it has less chance of going down underneath your stencil if you're using a nice soft one with a soft cream you can see these are very precise, uh, wasn't difficult to put on at all, um, but if anybody's going to have any trouble it's going to be because they're applying too much pressure and pushing it around. Just by the by, one of the things I like doing, and this really works for me, is uh, with my stencils, I use a little bit of one of um, Tim Holtz, um, what do you call these things, tissue tape. 
The reason why is I just leave a little bit on the edge, just a tiny bit. And basically you can wet it and wet it and wet it and it still stays sticky. So I just leave, you'll find a lot of my stencils have that little bit of tape on the edge. Because it makes it really easy when you're laying it down and applying your creams. And you want it to be steady if you are, you know, wanting it to be precise. I haven't, uh, one of the reasons why you'll get marks like this is doing what I did where I just grabbed my stencil and I put it down and I can, lazy and I don't want to wash it yet and so I just stick it down again of course a little bit will seep out and go under here it doesn't matter with this particular technique so I haven't worried about it you can see I haven't worried about bits any bits that have come on it at all so you can just leave it on the edge put it down and just put it on there um, to clean these um, I actually use and you know, look at the state of it is um, a scrubby. When I use so many things and I'm not particularly tidy with these things, I don't keep them pristine, I don't care as long as they work. When they get too much of me, when you're applying paint through them, when you're applying gesso through them, it's terrible to um, clean off unless you do it straight away. And if you know anything about me, I'm not a straight away girl. I just use them and abuse them. You can have a bowl sitting by you and throw them into water, but it's never going to work for me because I'm always going to muck up or get excited about something and just leave them there. So what I use is my scrubby. And I put it on my non-stick craft mat, stick it down and basically wet it and go over the top. I don't know that that's a thing that you're meant to do. I don't really care because it works for me. It works brilliantly. And of course it cleans up all your hands as well. So if you get one of these, those are from Ranger too. Fabulous for cleaning up your stencils. If you're like me, you do crazy things. Put it down. Let's grab some. This will use this modeling cream. I'm not really caring about what color I use. Um, oh, another thing. I'm always going to get distracted here, girls. Viva Decor products are absolutely fabulous, but they are terrible at getting good seals on these things. They put a bit of foil on the top and you're meant to peel it off nicely. Can't do it. Um, I always rip it because I'm wanting to get in there. If you do that, just get yourself... Don't be worried about how it looks. You don't want your product to spoil, especially the ones like the ferro metal, which dry incredibly quickly. Get yourself a bit of, we call it glad wrap, saran wrap, cling film, whatever you like. Bung it on the top of there when you're finished and screw it down and leave it like that. Mine look like this. Yeah, it's not fancy, but it does the job. I don't really care. It's all about the product that I'm using. So anyway, back to this. Put that on there. Give yourself a bit of, get yourself a bit of cream out. Don't think about it too much and just put it on. Put it through. Put it through. Keep on putting it through. Like spread and butter. And that's the consistency of this. It's kind of soft and buttery. Um, now, a lot of, um, another thing I'm going to tell you about is I keep by me, this is a fun thing to do, lots of cut my uh, piece of chipboard into, some of them are 2 by 2 and some of them are 4 by 2 And a lot of you will be, have been used to taking your product off your mat and putting it onto into your journals or picking it up with other tags and what have you. But I decided that I wanted to do some interesting wall art. And so this is what I've done. And when I've got leftover product, it goes onto these little squares um, to texture them, to help texture them. So if I've got something left on my stencil when I'm finished and I want to take it off, um, I'll get it and I'll just, I don't really care what color the color this is or what it is. I'll just put some texture on there um, in any, what, whatever shape I want, however, whatever type it is. Because I'll create something, I'm going to create a big piece of wall art or I might do frames or I might be putting it in my um, 12 by 12 books or in my layouts. And I'll just create texture on something and I've kept those spacings because I want to be able to, when I'm putting it on the wall or when I'm putting it on um, to make a piece of art or in a frame, I want to be able to keep these so that I can keep them all different textures, all different ways and create um, a piece of art and it could be that I change the colors of everything completely and make it look like metal and do a big piece of art but it's a fun thing to do so just keep them 
are you and put all your product your spare product off onto those instead of the others okay let's see how we're done with this one put my bit of wrap back because peel this up off here peel this back and look beautiful 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 um, and it's not hard to do I can fold these down I usually fold them down um, and then I will throw that I'll try and be a good girl and put it in some water okay back to this technique where I've created this tag this big tag and I've put my modeling cream on if you to call modern cream haven't cared about what color it is haven't cared about that it wasn't particularly done well and then I've created this out of it now this also is not going to show up very good on the video but I'll show you how I created it and hopefully we'll put some good photos at the end where you might be able to see the detail because this is non-porous we're going to be able to apply alcohol ink over the top of it now it's very important if you're doing this that you do it on to black because alcohol ink when you put it on won't show up on the black it'll only pick up on to the images that you've got there now you can be very precise and want to have these um, koi fish looking like they are the right colors but I'm not really going to care about that it's just for fun okay so I'm going to choose some colors of the alcohol ink and I, it's best it is best to start off with the lighter ones and perhaps decide where you want placement obviously um, these are meant to be some sort of water lily so you can think about that um, and maybe what color you'd like to have them now you could put the color on by using um, your Tim Holst um, blending tool with the one that you put the felt on don't use the one with the sponge um, it just you just change it out for one of the felts and we'll put a bit of yellow on, um, on both so I'll put a bit of yellow and a bit of green and I'll go over the top you've got your blending solution remember um, to activate it I'll also use a um, I'll use a dripping technique on this to get it in place. You can even stick your it in your brush. It's going to ruin your brush if you care about your brushes. Don't do it. Okay, so we'll put a little bit of green and yellow up here. And you'll see how it sits on top, but because we've done it over black, there is no um, it doesn't show on the card itself. So we'll put a little bit of this over these so-called lily pads. You Actually, what the heck? I'll put it on at all. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes you actually don't need to put any more ink on there. You just need a bit more blending solution. This isn't any particular action I'm using here. Some people, you can rub, you can um, pounce, you can do what you like. I can always come back and use this again just by reactivating it but now I just want to get a little bit of a different color in a place so I'm going to just change this out can you see how fun this is it's just like you don't even have to think about it you can just play with it till you get it how you want it you know and if you don't like it you can just remove it with the um, ink blending tool and the blending solution or a q-tip and uh, start again. It will leave a little stain on this, but it won't. Um, nothing that you can't change by coming over the top. And remember, these are your translucent inks um, that will sit on top and give you that kind of glass see-through effect. The other thing we can do is we can do dripping on here, just to create some patterns on these water lilies. say making cards you can make oh so many in a row because you can just keep on reactivating your ink with your blending so I wanted to change some of that a little um, you could get a q-tip you could get a brush remember you're going to destroy your brush and you could come in and you could uh, lighten this up a bit and then perfect pearls okay perfect pearls looks fabulous on black looks fabulous 
going over um, any of your work and giving it that nice sheen it's one of my favorite sprays to use because it hasn't got high color in the actual fluid but it's got very high color in the mica now you usually most people spray these but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to take my poor abused brush here and get it down in there I use this a lot with brushes and just get a bit of that mica get it all mixed up And then I'll just scoot a little bit of it around on here and kind of give, um, this is still, I hope you can see it because it is hard to see with a video and I don't really care where it goes, I just want to give it a little bit of a scoot round and I'll combine the colours, I'll use another colour as well. This one is Blue Raspberries, a bit harsh there, I've got a bit of much mica there, some of this greeny colour, try and make it look a little oceany, and yes I did just bung my brush back in there and put a bit of blue in it, but what the heck, I'm always combining these things anyway. I think this the modern cream, I haven't tried it yet, but I think if we could do a similar technique on a box or and get that highly enameled look, but I haven't tried that yet, so I'm not going to say it's going to work until I have. Uh, one thing I'd like to tell you about the modern cream, if you have a look at this piece here, this has got two types of paste on it. It's got um, Tim Holtz Ranger Texture Paste and it's also got the modern cream. Stupid me, I did it in the same colour so it's hard to see. Now if you try and put Tim's um, or Ranger's texture paste over something that is non-porous, like the background on this, it is going to come off. It is going to chip off. Remember this. If you put it over card, it's not going to come off. If you put it even over wood, it's not going to come off so easily because it, it kind of glues to it. And the same thing will happen with your modelling creams. If you pick at them, they'll come off. The good thing about that is, is not so much with the Ranger one which is more brittle, but the modeling creams are more flexible. So you can get your whatever stencil you like, say if I wanted um, hearts, um, and I wanted the stencil hearts over something but I didn't want them in that um, how, how they look on that particular one. I'd get my hard, get this, and I put my texture paste or my modeling cream, sorry, through this. Now you can combine these modeling creams, so you could combine a red and a gold if perhaps you were doing Valentine's, and put it through this onto a non stick surface of some sort. Then later on, you can peel them up and stick them just wherever you want them in your work. Um, so that's a fun thing to do with your modeling creams. So, see how easy that is to do? Two different versions, and you can keep on working this up anyhow you like. Add detail. Stamp over these a little bit if you want a bit of texture on them. Um, you'd have to use your archival links then. Uh, but then, so see, playing. Playing is fun. There's lots of other ways to get texture. There's lots of other ways to have fun. I mean, you've all seen the ladies on the videos use their glue guns and make um, embellishments out of them. Let me show you something with that. I mean, here's one where I've decided I'm just going to get some of that glue and put it on one of my squares for texture. I mean, I could do something like go over that with paint and go, or go over that with um, this leftover alcohol and give it. Let's put a little bit of this on here. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with my bit of art that I was telling you about before. So I don't really care what colours I put it on now because chances are it's all going to be taken away and made into something else. But I could go over this with some of this stuff over and create some fun effects on it. And that is just glue. That is just glue from your glue gun. This won't show up very well, but um, again... I've just got a, a glue gun, put a big blob down there, uh, I've seen this, a lot of people, ladies, there's one lady on YouTube does it, she makes jewellery this way, cheap jewellery this way, 
but I like using it for all sorts of different things. You can mold with your glue guns, you can put it into your glue into the molds and things, and you can get these fancy ones if you really want to, special ones that you can use sticks. But I've just always used just ordinary glue sticks. So what I've done with this is I've put a blob of glue down, stamped into it. I always use just a bit of archival, doesn't really care, I don't really care what colour it is, just so that it will release the glue afterwards. I've left it for a few a minute or so just to set up a little. Um, so I put my glue down, let it dry just a little bit and then just set my stamp on top of it. Okay. I've also done it a different way where I've actually put on these tiles, I've put the glue onto the tile and just then set it on to get some fun effects on there. These ones I've painted black because the, you really you, you can't see much detail on that. It's not till you come over it with say a rub or a, um, a paint or use a little bit of this Viva Decor. Don't put your fingers in your Viva Decor either. Okay, just stick it on a bit. But use a bit of this. Um, it's not till you come over with a rub or something. I think my paint's still wet on that. Um, but you start to see the detail coming out. You can use your rub and buff or whatever you're into. And then you'll get some detail coming out on this. And if you're like me, you'll just put a big glob on there like you shouldn't. So you have to take it away. But at any stage when you, um, you're doing this type of work, you can um, paint over again. If it's, not, if it's not what you want. So you can use that or you can use paints, you can use whatever, just to touch the top of it to bring out the design that's underneath. Put a close up of that one so you can see. And you can put several colours on there. Look okay, there's so many techniques that you can do with these modelling pastes. It just goes on and on and I'll be here for 24 hours. But you can stamp into them like we've done on these. Um, but I'm going to show you... Another one. This is the one that I really like a lot. This is where we have used the matte medium, transparent matte medium, and we have used our texture tools, and then we've sprayed over it while it's wet. So we'll just do a quick demo of that. If you have any trouble getting your lids off, which sometimes you do, get your heat tool out, wave it around on it, and it'll come off in a breeze. Use your Dina Wakely palette knife, because it's fun to use. And we're going to spread some of this down over our tag. A nice, it's lovely buttery feel to it. A nice thickness, just so that we can get some texture in there. And you can drag it up and around and over or whatever you want to do. I'm going to drag some of this down here like this. Wipe it off onto there. And across like this. See, that gives me that kind of pattern. You can use a, um, a credit card or the straight edge of these two to drag some texture paste over the top. So you can use this side if you want. Just flatten it out. It helps if you take it off the rim. Can edit all that crap out. <laughs> <laughs> what I just did then. <laughs> okay, so you can use your, the other side of your tool to get a nice smooth coating on. I still prefer using my Knife. I know some of you girls are expert at using other things. We're not really caring what it's like. Note that if you've got colour all over you, it is going to pick up on your in your um, texture paste. Some cross ones. And you know, if you don't like what you've made, guess what you're going to do? You're just going to smooth it out and do it again. Okay, so we've got some of that down there. Right, water. Now we've got some of that on there. Now we're going to do some sprays. So we will start off with our light sprays again. Put a bit of that on there. That was fossilized amber. Now we're going to go for this nice twisted citron, which I kind of like. And you can get it to run around the grooves that you've made. And I'm going to finish it off with some bundle. Now you've got to be careful when you combine your colours. Remember your colour mixes because you're going to have um, browns work out in there if you colour certain 
put certain colours on. Some more this okay, Tash, come over here, do this one. See when you get the green and the red, mm. it makes brown. Okay, now we just set that up and it'll sink into your texture paste and end up like looking like this. Okay, you have your transparent gels like these and that concludes all your texture paste from Ranger. You have your opaque ones like these ones and that's like your Tim Holtz texture paste. You have all sorts of other texture paste that we haven't even gone into, like your tar gels and your coarse pumice gels. There's just too many to mention. You can colour them like they've been coloured here, or you can put colour over top of them. You use your texture tools, and you can use things from out of your kitchen, forks, um, all sorts of things that you can use to create texture in your work. You don't necessarily have to go and have special tools. Everything's great to use with stencils. You have your palette knives. I like these ones. These are really flexy ones for the softer gels. And I'll use a metal one for the harder gels. There's too many techniques to mention. But I hope you've enjoyed watching us do this today. Um, I'll put a few pictures up at the end. And I'll catch you next time. Mm.